All right, so thanks for having me, Josh. Uh, my name is Dave Kong. I'm a product manager on the Link Marketing team, and I cover Link for Mac. Um, and today's objective is really to go over uh, really the functionality of Link for Mac 20, 2011 and some of the differences between PC and Mac. Um, and, and it looks like we have a small group here, so let's make this interactive. If you guys have any questions, please uh, either type in the I window or, or feel free to jump in. I probably only have about uh, 20 to 25 minutes of content, and the rest we can fill with questions. Uh, so Link for Mac is really uh, a part of the Link investments across platforms and devices. Uh, starting on our left over here, we have our, our rich native PC client. That's really the full feature functionality client for the Windows platform. Um, stepping to the right, this is uh, what we're going to talk about today, Link for Mac 2011, um, our investments on the Mac platform. And we're really, we're really seeing our customers really demand a lot more features and a lot more functionality out of our Mac uh, clients across the board, not just with Link as well. Um, a lot of customers, especially in the communications and entertainment space and, and EDU as well, uh, they're having, they're, they're pretty much Mac shops and we need to um, build clients capable of suiting their demands. We do also have uh, browser-based clients, which are, which is essentially a browser-based meeting experience and some of you might be using that today. Uh, we're, we call that Link Web App and it's a great way for people uh, outside your organization or people that don't have Link installed uh, to still join uh, Link conferences without having to download a client. Uh, just recently, we did release uh, mobile clients for Link uh, within the past two weeks, I believe, uh, and we've developed native mobile clients for all major smartphone platforms. And the last image on the right, our, our desk phone, uh, integration, we do have, you know, you are able to, to see instant uh, see presence and also your calendar information from uh, a whole variety of IIP phones uh, available in the marketplace today. So really, Link for Mac is just part of this large story where Link is across multiple platforms and devices. And when we talk about Link for Mac, it's really um, an iteration of, an iteration of different Mac investments that we've made um, as Microsoft over the past couple of years. Uh, starting on the left, Mac Messenger 7, it was uh, two releases ago, and, and that was still a dual-headed client, uh, a client you know, catering to our consumer base, Windows Live Messengers, and also uh, our business base as well. It was really the client for OCS 2007, uh, which was about two releases ago. Uh, last year, we did release uh, Communicator for Mac 2011 in October 2010. That was the client for our previous version of Link, OCS 2007-R2, uh, and that really took uh, leaps and bounds after Mac Messenger 7, really splitting the client. Um, so now when you have communicated from Mac 2011, that's specifically just for OCS and Link users. Uh, now, just a couple months ago, we did release Link for Mac 2011, which is our client for both Link 2010 and Link Online. So for this client, it is compatible with both Link Server and Link Online. Uh, it doesn't work with earlier versions. However, if your company is still on OCS 2007 R2, uh, we do recommend still using the uh, the client, uh, the communicator from Mac 2011 client, which works with R2, and also it does work with Link Server. Here are some uh, screenshots of the new Link for Mac client. Um, and like the client on the PC, it's really about, you know, communicating through IAM and presence, through conferencing, through voice capabilities. And just like on the PC side, it has a nice escalation scenario where we can start with a instant message, just like on the screenshot on the right, and really add audio, adding video, uh, turning that to a desktop share, and also adding people, turning that into a conference. It's a really nice experience um, available both on the PC and Mac. It's very consistent as well. Uh, Link for Mac does have a desktop sharing and file sharing capabilities. Um, it has two main tabs. One is the contacts tab and the other is the phone tab. Uh, Link for Mac was designed to be a soft phone on your computer. The PC side, it doesn't require a VP connection. You can work from anywhere uh, outside the corporate network. And because it's a Mac client, it does have a Mac look and feel. Um, some things that are new for Link for Mac 2011, if you guys are familiar with um, our older version, we've added a lot of conferencing capabilities. Um, so 
the ability to collaborate seamlessly across PC Mac that's added, being able to join a Link Talk Link 2010 conference uh, with an improved Link user experience, that's we spent a lot of work um, and investment in that. We've also added uh, the ability to schedule conferences within Outlook for Mac 2011, and that's been a customer ask, and we've added that this time around. Uh, so what that means is that from Outlook for Mac, you can uh, schedule a new meeting, and there's going to be a button that says Create Online Meeting, and I'll have a screenshot of this later. But essentially, you'll provide all the meeting credentials, all the links, all the phone numbers, right within that Outlook invite, and you can send that uh, to your meeting attendees. And so it's very a very good experience there. Uh, the second pillar of investments is that we, we've added advanced call controls to Link for Mac. So that, what that means is that you can now do silent ring, you do call forwarding, also call transfer. Uh, and again, this new client supports both Link Online and Link Server. And just like on the, the Windows side for Link 2010, Link for Mac also supports peer-to-peer uh, -peer audio and video between Link for Mac users and also Windows Live Messenger users. So the next couple of slides um, cover really the capabilities of the client. Uh, so this slide covers, you know, the, the essence of presence. And there's a nice screenshot of the contact list on the left right here. Uh, on the top, you see the me area. You see your photo, uh, your name, uh, and your presence availability. And just like on the Windows side, presence works really in two ways. Uh, one, automatically, and, and number two, manually. Automatically means, you know, it reads exchange calendar information so it can detect when you're in a meeting. So if you're in a meeting based on your calendar information, Link is going to populate your presence as in a meeting. It also detects Link methods. So if you're in a call or in a conference call, uh, Link is going to automatically populate it based on what you're doing with Link. Uh, in, the, in the other ways, the traditional manual setting you see on the bottom right-hand corner, the, the traditional presence states that we have uh, available, busy, do not disturb. If you put on do not disturb, you won't receive any instant messages, so it's assuming you're doing a presentation or stuff like that and you don't want to be interrupted with, with uh, communication, that's going to block communication for you. There's this personal, personal note in the me area as well, uh, let other, others know what you're thinking. And then down below we see the contacts tab, so you see different members of, of your team. And if you look at actually Jamie's uh, presence over here, you see a little Windows Live Messenger icon, and that denotes Jamie's a Windows Live Messenger buddy. So with Link, if, you, if you're on Link server, you can add Windows Live Messenger contacts, AOL contacts, and also Yahoo contacts uh, natively uh, from Link. With Windows, if you're using Link online, uh, that we only support Windows Live Messenger contacts. And down below, there's different communication modules, um, methods that you can use to communicate with your colleagues. Some of the differences between the PC and Mac side are around access level and location. Those are the two biggest differences uh, when it comes to presence. Um, on the PC side, there's different access levels you can set, in colleagues, work group, uh, friends and family, and that's going to reveal a different amount of information. Uh, for Link for Mac, we don't have those settings, and the default level is, is colleagues, meaning they'll show your, your work-related uh, information, your office, and also your, your work number as well. Uh, location is, is something new that we added to Link 2010. However, in Link for Mac 2011, we don't have location uh, in the main client. This next slide is around instant messaging, and, and this is a basic instant messaging window, the, the screenshot on the left here. You see it has a nice, uh, a lot of different uh, options to, to escalate a call. Uh, right now, this is a, a IM conversation between uh, two colleagues, a peer-to-peer -peer IM conversation. However, it's very easy just by clicking these buttons, these icons right here, to escalate or to add audio, to add video, without having to switch windows. And that's a very powerful uh, user experience uh, user experience tool. You can also add sharing um, within the same window here, or, or attach files as well. Uh, you can even drag and drop from your contact list right to this window, and that's going to turn it into a conference or a multi-party conversation. Regarding the differences between Link 2010 and Link for Mac, uh, Link for Mac does have a feature that Link 2010 does not, uh, and that feature is spell check. So if I type in a misspelled word within my IM window before I send, um, it's going to have a red squiggly line like you see 
like you used to see in, in, in Word, uh, and it's going to offer for suggestions on how, how to, to correct that spelling. I mentioned before um, public IM connectivity, which is the ability to connect to public instant messaging networks. Um, there's a difference between link server and link online capabilities. With link server, we do support uh, connecting to AOL, Windows Live Messenger, and Yahoo. With link online, we only support connecting to Windows Live Messenger. This is the contacts and groups section. Uh, you see that the contact card uh, shows some basic information, shows the name, the present state, also relevant work information, title work. If uh, Sergey had his mobile number published and visible to me, that would show up as well. And from within this contact card, I can choose the different options of how to communicate. So this contact card appears whenever you see a presence bubble. So you'll see this presence bubble and also in other office applications. Um, so even if you see this in, in Outlook and you see this presence bubble, you can hover over it and it's going to reveal this contact card and you can see this information. And right within, from within that application, you can start to choose to send an email to an IM without having to switch. Some of the differences between the PC and the Mac side revolve around uh, recent contacts and tagging contacts. Recent contacts is basically you know, your last 10 contacts or your most popular contacts. Uh, link for mac doesn't have it, but link for mac does have a pinned contact section where you can just, it's pretty much a favorite section where you can drag contacts into uh, this particular area and it'll show up on top. Uh, tagging contacts is the ability to, to be alerted whenever someone comes back from an away state. Uh, link for mac uh, is not, does not support that. And also link for mac doesn't support distribution groups. So if you have distribution, distribution groups in your company, um, link 2010 can add those groups at one time. However, in Link for Mac, you're going to have to, add, you're going to, have to add them manually. There's several different Office integration points um, that are available on the Mac side. Uh, the first one, and probably the most popular one, is the integration of presence within Outlook. So if you see, look at the, the first screenshot on the top, you see you know, a basic email with the different presence icons. And like I mentioned before, you know, hovering over these presence icons, that's going to build a contact card. And from the contact card, you can choose to start an IM and without having to switch, uh, without having to switch applications. Leak for Mac also powers the, also powers the co-authoring scenario in both Word and PowerPoint. So if you are editing a Word document or a PowerPoint document, on a, on a common SharePoint site, and you can both author this at the same time. And when two people are in the same window or authoring the same document, you'll see um, a presence icon on the bottom uh, hand of the application, and you'll know, and you'll be able to see their presence and also instant message right within that Word document or that PowerPoint document, so it's very powerful. Uh, Word for Mac also has a feature where you can send an instant message and send the file, uh, and that's the screenshot on the bottom right here. So under the Review tab, under Share, there's a section called Instant Message. And you can send that, uh, send the file and start an instant message to any, any person on your contact list. This is a screenshot of the basic meeting experience uh, with Link from Mac. And we've, if you've seen the, the previous version of Communicate from Mac 2011, you see that we've made a lot of improvements in both uh, a function and also user experience. And also, if you've seen or if you've used uh, Link 10, the meeting experience on Link 2010, uh, you see that this is pretty consistent with uh, with the functionality. Uh, you see on the left-hand side, you see a lot of rich information, uh, presenter information, lobby capabilities, being able to admit or deny uh, people. Uh, you also see roster details or these modalities. You know what each presenter, what capabilities each uh, attendee has, whether they have instant messaging, sharing abilities, audio and video, that's going to show up if they have it as well. You should see a nice video and also a session for instant messaging. Uh, so very consistent with that on the PC side. Uh, in terms of gaps between the Mac and the PC, um, Link for Mac doesn't support whiteboarding and it doesn't support polling. Uh, so those are both functions. Actually, if, you, if those are critical and essential functions, you can still utilize uh, the Link web app. Uh, to, to utilize that functionality. It doesn't have recording or archiving uh, of meetings. 
This is a screenshot of, of the Outlook scheduling that I talked about earlier. And essentially, when you do create a meeting in Outlook for Mac, this is a, a basic meeting, uh, there's going to be a button that says Create Online Meeting. So once you click this button, Create Online Meeting, Create Online Meeting is going to populate all the different credentials uh, that are necessary for, for anyone inside or outside your organization to join your meeting. So it's going to have a link to the, to the online meeting URL and also different phone numbers just in case, you know, the, your customer partner doesn't have a link. They can still dial in and participate in the meeting. So it's a very convenient way to schedule online meetings with link. As far as the sharing experience goes, Link 2010 has a lot of different sharing options. Link 2010 on the PC side, uh, you can desktop share, you can application share, you can PowerPoint upload and view, and you can also do file transfer. For Link from Mac, the primary solution for sharing is going to be desktop sharing, which is what I'm doing with you right now. Uh, and even if uh, a user on Link 2010 starts an application share or starts a PowerPoint upload, uh, on Link from Mac, you can still see that. You can, uh, you can view it as well. Uh, for, for PowerPoint, uh, for Link for Mac users, you, you cannot upload PowerPoint like you can on the PC side. However, if someone does upload a PowerPoint, you can take over as presenter, and you can still present with PowerPoint. This slide shows some of our basic voice capabilities. Um, so there's two tabs. There's a contacts tab and the phone tab. This screenshot on the left is of the phone tab. Um, has PSTN uh, dialog capabilities with Link Server, with Link Online, that these capabilities don't exist. Um, and there's advanced, you can either, you know, search for contacts within your organizations and dial, or you can manually type in the number. And in the bottom here, you do have advanced call controls where you can set uh, call forwarding or simul ring, <clears throat> or call transfer right within this, this main client right here. Uh, the screenshot is in the middle is the basic experience around uh, audio conferences or, or conferences. Uh, even from this, you can add video if the other person's a link user and you start sharing right within the same window. It's very consistent with, with IMs and peer-to-peer -peer video as well. Uh, and different options uh, to transfer call or, or mute yourself. Uh, some of the gaps between Mac and PC is that for Link for Mac, we don't have the visual voicemail integration like you see on the Link 2010 side. Uh, essentially what that is, is that on the second half of the dial pad or the phone tab, you're going to see, you know, different voicemails connected to Exchange Unified Messaging. Uh, you can certainly still connect to a voicemail with Link for Mac. However, the visual integration is not there in the client. Some, some more of the features related to the voice experience and the different options. Uh, we didn't mention the, the call forwarding, the sign lowering. Uh, redirecting calls to voicemail. Some of the additional gaps between Link for Mac and Link 2010 is that Link for Mac, the client does not support uh, E911 support, enhanced 911 capabilities. Uh, also doesn't support delegation and team calling and managing calls for others. And for more resources around Link for Mac or, or Link Online, there are, there are two public websites that you guys can um, go to in addition to the forms that you guys use. Uh, on the Link for Mac website, there's um, a feature comparison chart between uh, Mac and PC. And also there's uh, a couple different training videos, about two to three minutes long, that's uh, available for, for download that you guys can pass to your organization or, or for more information on how to use or demo some of the features, creating a meeting. That's all in the training videos that you can download. Um, so that concludes uh, the slides that I had prepared. Um, so let me go back here to see if there are any questions. And feel free to jump in. Oh, great. Great job, Dave.